one book in the entire Bible. I'm a, I love God's Word. I study God's Me Word. Too. I read all the books of the Bible. Me too. This is the first time in my life that I'm to spend time in one book. And I will say that it's been since September of 2019. Can I tell you that I'm still in the same book? Hmm. Because the Lord is still showing me things. But the Lord said, I'm going to keep you in the book of Psalms. And as you go through what I'm going to show you, the Lord said, I'm going to show you my glory Psalms. The words that I have recorded that give me glory, that give me honor and magnify me. So essentially, three days led to 30 days. 30 days led to 90 days and on and on. What God was having me do was starve my soul of the natural order of things, of worries, needs, things that we normally are conditioned to constantly go to the Lord for prayer, which is important that we do. We know that God, the Word of God teaches importunity in prayer. We are to go and tug on the hem of His garment. We're to continually come before Him. However, I realized immediately that my prayer culture before, my prayer models were modeled after what I have been taught, which is wrong. 75 to 80 percent of an average person believer's life, 80 percent of their life is spent on need-based prayers. Transacting with God, asking God for things, for stuff, for healing, legitimate things. I'm not judging that. Mm -hmm. Legitimate things. But what it does, I realize, and the Lord showed me, that it breeds a nurtures a needy spirit. So we can never be free and move into the life of abundance. It, it comes against thankfulness, because when we come into a transformational realm, where we're no longer dictated by our needs, do you know what happens? No. Thankfulness, gratitude, pleasure, everything you see begins to take on a different look. And I, would, and I tell people that 80% of their prayer life should be in the glory psalms or the glory of magnifying God, and 20% should be a need-based prayer. So you take selected psalms having to do with the glory of God and worship of God, and you just substitute your normal, whatever you did normally for prayer, with this. The Lord said, when I get up in the morning and I'm praying, every time I began to fall back into the default model of asking, he had me stop. He said, you are not to ask. You are now to glorify me. Give me an example. I, I want you to take a psalm right now and just, I'm putting you in your, in, in your house, in your secret place. What are you doing? And do it. More than what are you doing, just do it. Oh Lord, the heavens are telling of the glory of God. The expanse of heaven cannot be measured, but it declares the work of your hands that are immeasurable, that are incomprehensible. You, Father, are glorious and mighty. Day after day, you pour forth speech. Night after night, you reveal knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, from even the stars in the sky that you, O oh Lord, have placed there by your sovereign will, by your sovereign design. Their voice cannot be heard. Yet, they give evidence that has gone throughout all the earth, I need to only look, Lord, to the night sky and see, Father, your glory. For, Father, you are the bridegroom that is coming. And I am the bride that's waiting for you. Those are the types of meditations that began to form my morning time with the Lord. And I can tell you, as a fact, I've started doing that. I believe that I'm going to have more of my prayers answered by worshiping God and glorifying God and living in the glory than if I spend all my time praying those prayers. Sid, that's what happened. My prayers have been and being answered by the Lord as I continue to remain in exaltation and giving Him glory. Because the truth of the matter is, earth is difficult, heaven is easy. Earth by its design, by its fallen nature, you would agree, is a need-based environment. Will you and I or all those listening ever be without needs? No. If our prayers are answered today, it just makes room for new prayers tomorrow. Could be my children, my grandchildren, the ministry, life, the country, on and on and on. There's always prayers because by nature we are, we are needy because we're fallen. We live in a corruptible state. So, Father, we are weak. The Lord says, who is man that you are mindful of him? 
we are as vulnerable as a little ant. I walk on the earth sometimes, I walk outside, quite frankly, and I stop, and you know what? I feel like an ant on the globe, under the majesty of God. You know, Sid, you asked me, what was the feeling of freedom? And I mentioned it felt like a bird that was set free for the first time. But my entire life has changed in the realm of freedom. I feel as I am an observer visiting Earth. I live detached, which is a level of freedom that I have never experienced. And the words of Yeshua in the Brit HaDashah in the New Testament is it tells us clearly that we are in this world, but we are not of it. But now more than ever before, I no longer feel part of this on a level that I have never felt before. That was difficult for some time. That was, I felt, almost a disadvantage um, for my family to adjust. They would watch me go out on a windy day, and I need to feel the wind. There's something about the wind in the air, the freedom of it. I can feel it from when I was in that spiritual state, the freedom of the flow of it. I go out on a rainy day, and I let the rain fall on my head. I look mashukan, I look crazy, but I don't care, because it's the Lord that sends the rain, the refreshing rain. You, you know what it is? You've come to learn. You really only have an audience of one. Yes. And that yes. is our yes. Yes. That's who you're playing. And the outside has become also an extension of my sanctuary. There have been times that I take a walk, and it's around sunrise. I'm up at 3 a.m. every morning. I walk, and the sun is beautiful, and I bow down on the sidewalk and worship the Lord. Sid, I don't care. I let someone ask me. Someone asked me what I was doing. It turned out to be a Muslim girl. Hmm. I began to share about God. I began to witness to her. One morning, where did she come from? I have no idea. But I happened to be on the street, on the sidewalk that morning, worshiping the Lord. I, my perceptions of detail is magnified. I can look at trees from a distance and see the detail of the tiniest branches and leaves. This was not before you. No, said. no. I take my grandson for a walk and I say, Hudson, we're going out to see the beauty of God's hand. And we stop and I said, I want you to look. And we picked up perfectly shaped tiny little acorns. I know this may sound crazy to people. And I pick up little flowers or a little this, or we look at a little bug. I say, God created that, Hudson. It came from Him. Everything and anything and everything of the natural creation, I admire. And You're Bible, glorifying God. And I study Every. God. I don't worship nature. I worship the Creator of it all. And so every day, Sid, is an adventure. My eyes are wide open. My ears hear. I, I don't speak as much as I used to. I listen more. I'm in the store or I meet someone. I listen to people. I observe them. The Lord's given the ability for, for me to see into the soul of an individual. And I can see the condition of the soul. You, know, you didn't see this no. before. You and, I, and I can see many times what happened to them as a child. Hmm. I see them in their childlike state, falling through things that have happened in their life. And I begin to pray for them. I begin to pray for healing for them. Do you have more compassion for people now? Completely. Are you 100%. more interested in people knowing the Messiah now than before? 100%. It's my life's call. It's the messaging of what God has given me. You, How can you they not? use an even stronger word. You say there's an urgency for people. There is an urgency. No one knows when eternity calls. We think we have our life scripted out. We think we have all the plans. The Bible says measure your days. Our life is like the grass of the field. It can be gone today. The wind can blow it away tomorrow. My life ended like that. I didn't plan it. In a twinkling of an eye, my soul left. And thank the Lord, my God, that he brought me back. If the Lord didn't restore life, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be talking together. I would be gone. And that, it, that reminded me, or it reminded me is, a, is too weak of a word. It was branded upon my mind, upon my heart, that people need to get right with God. People need to know that they know that they know that should they leave tomorrow, whether it's a car accident, whether it's a diagnosis, whatever it may be, you can't plan death. Where will they go? Because I realize the glory and the peace and the joy of when I rose is not going to be experienced by those who do not know the Lord. 
You either rise up to the glories of heaven or one descends to hell. And hell is blacker than black. That grips my soul. That grips my soul. That I cannot rest until the message is constantly declared. You know, we all intellectually know this, but there's a difference between intellectually knowing it and every cell in your body worshiping God. Look, Rabbi Felix did not think he was going to die, but he died. Oh, yes, it was a medical mistake. But the truth is, you could walk out in front of a car, you could be uh, in, in your dr driving, as so many people tell me, and a car crashes into them. They're, they're just, you just don't know when your end's going to come. But I do know this. I do know that God is so good that if you say this prayer out loud with me right now and mean it to the best of your ability, not because you deserve anything, but because God is so good, period. That's it. Say this prayer out loud. Dear God, out loud. Dear God, Dear God I'm, a I'm a sinner. Against you, and you alone have I sinned. And I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Messiah washes away all of my sins. And you remember my sins no more. And now that I am clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. Be my Savior. I make you my Lord. I want my own experiential knowledge of you. Amen.